it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little unique. I thought it'd be really fun to show you guys how I vacuum seal the meat that I get. Um, today I'm doing chicken. I went to Costco yesterday and I needed to stock up on the boneless, skinless, organic chicken breast that I get from there. And so I ended up getting five packages, which worked out to be a little over 28 and a half pounds of chicken. <laughs> it's a lot of chicken but we eat primarily chicken and turkey and so i went ahead and stocked up while i was there for winter time um also just in case anything happens um any shortages or anything like that i would have a little bit of a stockpile plus i had some in my freezer already from the last time i went to costco typically we go there about once a month so i really don't like doing it because it takes so long it took me a little over an hour to vacuum seal all of this meat but i thought i would show you kind of my process i have it pretty well figured out i have kind of a method to my to my madness and i've talked to you guys before about how much i love my vacuum sealer and how much value i think there is in having one so um that's what i'm going to be doing today so basically what i'm doing here to start off is i'm making bags to put the chicken in i had a couple small ones left over from the last time i had vacuum sealed something and then i'm going to be making bigger bags for the chicken breast so that's what i'm doing here is just making um, quite a few of the longer bags typically i put between three and four chicken breasts in each bag about that size is what it will take to hold all that chicken so that's what I'm doing first. You can buy the bags for your vacuum sealers that are already sealed on one end and you don't have to kind of make your own bags, but I like to because I vacuum seal such a variety of things. I really like to kind of customize how big or small I want the bag to be. So I typically just buy the rolls of the, the bags and then I just seal them on the ends. And if you notice, I am double sealing the end. So basically that just means I am melting or sealing the end twice in two different spots and then I'll do the same thing on the other end once I close everything up. I feel like that just gives you a really nice tight seal and if one of the seals happens to pop loose for some reason you do at least have another seal that's keeping the bag closed a little bit. So that's what I'm doing starting off there and I do that on my kitchen island and then on the other side I have kind of a whole little assembly line. I have a colander in the sink there that I use to rinse the chicken after I take it out of the packaging. I have a cutting board where I will trim off all the fat and gross little bits. I also have a baking sheet with a cookie rack on top. I like to put the chicken there after I have rinsed it and cut it just to get a little bit of the extra water that will drip off the bottom. That way when I put them in the bags to vacuum seal, it helps just to make sure they're not dripping with water from being rinsed. And I have my anti-cut gloves i have five of them because i've got five bags of chicken and after each bag i will usually take the glove off um, just because it's wet and gross by that point rewash my hands start the process over so i have five of those sitting out i love them i cannot imagine cooking without them because i would cut my hand on a daily basis if i didn't have those so i've got that section all set up i also have my trash can kind of pulled out if you can see there on the bottom left our trash can is mounted inside a cabinet and I keep it open that way when I've got gross chicken juice I can put it I can put it straight in the trash and not make a huge mess. Now that everything is all set up it's time to rinse and cut all of that chicken. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I put the chicken in the colander, I rinse it with the spray feature on my faucet and then I just trim off all of the fat and gross little bits. I had gotten a comment a long time ago in one of my cooking videos. Somebody said that I cut off too much of the chicken but if I see something gross and stringy in it, I am cutting it out. I really don't care if it weighs some of the chicken or not. I try not to but that does happen sometimes. So if you see me cut off a little bit more than you think I should, that's probably why. Since I have my system all set up, I just bring the tray over. I did put a cutting board over there just to have an extra surface to put the bag of chicken on as I am filling it up. So I went and got a permanent marker so I can label the bags the month and day that I sealed them so that I'll know which stuff to use first. Obviously the stuff that's got an older date is gonna be what I'm gonna reach for first when I'm getting things out of the freezer. I also went and got some tongs so that I could put the chicken in the bag a little easier. Um, and also not have to handle the chicken unnecessarily. So. 
Most of the time, my husband does not eat with me and the girls. He is at work pretty much every night during dinner time. And even though I have leftovers almost every single night, he usually won't eat them. He'll usually say he's not hungry because he had such a late lunch or he'll get a snack later and not really eat dinner, which is terrible for him. But that's just the way that it is. It's the way that it's been for a long time. And so when I'm making dinner and I'm vacuum sealing meat and everything, I really mostly have the girls and I in mind. Um, and that usually ends up being three or four chicken breasts will last two dinners for me and both girls. So as you can see here, I put four chicken breasts in this bag while I was snapping and dancing to who knows what to keep myself entertained while I was waiting for it to vacuum all the air out. But three or four chicken breasts will be enough for me and the girls to have dinner one night and leftovers the next. Um, over the course of vacuum sealing these particular bags of chicken, I noticed that they were some of the biggest chicken breasts I've ever seen. It was like the Dolly Parton of chickens. And so a lot of the bags later on, I only ended up using three chicken breasts because they were so big. So I'll try to eyeball it and kind of even it out. Uh, you'll know based on your family size and if you're planning on making a meal that needs leftovers, you'll be able to figure out really how much chicken you need to put in a bag for each meal. That's kind of up to each personal family. So if it's really large chicken breasts, I might just do three, or if they're kind of medium large, I'll do like three large and one smaller piece of chicken. It really just depends, but typically it's almost always three or four pieces of chicken will last us for two dinners. So with the 28 pounds or 28 and a half pounds that I had in this particular Costco trip, it'll be about 22 meals for me and the girls. And that is the whole process start to finish with one bag of chicken. So now basically I'm just gonna go back over to my other station, which is the rinsing and cutting station and work on the second bag. I'll do the same thing for the second bag, take it to the island, vacuum seal it, label it, put it in the freezer. I'll turn around and do the same thing for however many bags of chicken I have. You get the idea, but that is my process. That is how I vacuum seal and save some of our chicken for anything that might come up, whether it's just not wanting to have to go to the grocery as often, or if I'm preparing for any type of disaster or shortage or um, winter storm. We actually have had a couple little baby minor, I don't want to call them winter storms because I know compared to some parts of the country, they were basically nothing. But for where we live, our entire city just goes into a big shutdown whenever it snows, places were closed, Starbucks, restaurants, places were closed. The streets weren't getting scraped. It was just a mess. Um, so I definitely like to have a lot of extra food and meat on hand for any or all of those situations. So even though it's a little bit of extra work on the front end to buy in bulk like this and uh, take the time to rinse them and cut them and vacuum seal them and all that, it really saves me a lot of time throughout the week of not having to go to the grocery as often. I know pretty much I've got mostly everything I could need to make at least a couple meals. It may not always be you know, something specific, but we've gotten to the point now in our um, kind of stockpiling and food prep process that I have a lot that we could make a lot of different meals with. And that makes me feel really good. It makes me feel prepared and takes a little bit of the edge off with anything that might be coming down the road. I know I have a little bit prepared ahead of time to help take care of my family. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're interested in prepping or any type of food stockpiling, or emergency preparedness stockpiling, um, anything like that, definitely check out my prepping playlist. It is in the description box. I linked it for you. There's not a whole lot of videos in there, but there are quite a few, and I think they'll be really useful, especially if you are new to preparing for any type of emergency situation, um, because we are very early beginners, too, I would, I would consider us, and um, I've learned a lot along the way, and so I'm kind of sharing our journey as we are learning things. So definitely check out that playlist if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe before you head out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.